Good morning, guys. Chris from Nichols Retirement Empire. Uh, this morning, I was going to show you just a couple of things in the backyard for the garden update. One is my little tomato that I had some success with. Uh, I got this from a sucker, and I've never done this before. So I'm really excited about it. I got one of the suckers off one of these tomatoes and uh, you know put it in some water. And so now I've, it, here it comes, it's growing. Uh, so it's about time to stake it here in a little, you know, maybe a few days. Um, actually, I may do it today, but I'm gonna stake this one instead of using the cages and see if that does any better with it. And then my other tomatoes are doing great. Um, they're starting to fill out some. Uh, these are my Rutgers. They got a lot of little tomatoes on them. Um, I don't see a lot of, and they're still, they're still flowering and stuff. So I might need to come back and hit them with some fertilizer. Okay, and down here I've got some, uh, some squash that's coming in. I got one squash plant. You know, I told you how I was getting all this fungus on them from all the rain. Um, so I'm just kind of letting them go and I'm going to let them yield as much as they will. But I got some nice squash in here. There's a real pretty, boy, look how fat and healthy that one is. I got another one down here. Got one growing over there. Still got a lot of blooms on it. Look at the bees. Big fat bee. Now, I've been watching uh, the, uh, the, the brew Milwaukee Bruce City Gardener, and he's been saying that you can take these flowers off the squash and eat the flowers. I'm not going to do that right now, <laughs> but I may try that sometime. But he says you can do that. Now I've got one plant. Maybe we could have them on a salad. He says you, yeah, he says you can fry them up. I got one plant that's not doing anything, and I got a big space back here. Uh, this is the one. But I ended up kind of having to pick all the leaves off. Actually, you know what? That whole side is that. That whole plant. side is that. Okay, well, I'm going to let these go. Uh, I'm not worried about picking all this stuff off anymore. I'm just letting them go because we're getting kind of late. I'm not going to mess with them. I'm going to let them yield what they're going to yield. Uh, my bell peppers have slowed up a little bit. But I still got, look, one, two, three, four. I got five or six peppers on them right now, I think. Now this one over here is blooming good. Yeah, that one's blooming. Uh, it has not yielded a pepper yet. It's the biggest, strongest plant. Uh, but I have not got one single pepper. It's a late bloomer. The other thing I wanted to show you guys is this, that I learned this year, and I picked this up off from YouTube, from YouTube people. I had never used mulch in my garden before. Um, get down here and I want you guys to see, and I, I have not weeded in probably a month. And there's hardly, you know, there's a few little things here and there. And uh, I've not had to water. Now we've had a good bit of rain, more rain than normal. Uh, but I will say this when I when it did not rain for about a week and a half I would have had to water several times and I have not had to water at all okay now I also had one of the uh, viewers one of the subs said they had never seen okra uh, and they didn't know how okra grew okay so you can see that okra grows on a stalk okay the okra can you see this one all right the okra grows in like between the stalks and it gets real pretty flowers on it too and you have to have a knife and you just cut the okra off the stalk and I think I put a couple of videos about uh, how to cook okra I attached a couple of those to uh, one of the comments in one of my earlier videos but if you want to see how to cook okra you can go to my wife's channel and her channel is called Collar Valley Cooks and she can show you how to fry up some delicious okra or bull okra. 
Some people ate it boiled. Okra is a real hot weather plant. Uh, a lot of people up north, what I understand, they can't grow okra. Um, the other thing about okra is this. If you grow okra, you got to come out and cut it every two or three days. Or you do down here. Um, and if you don't, they get really big. And we like our okra not any bigger than that. That's the size usually that we want. So, that's the thing about okra, is you just have to come out here every few days and cut you some okra. And if it rains and stuff, you may have to come out every day. I mean, it just depends on how good your okra's growing. Uh, mine's growing pretty good. You can see how tall it is. It's about uh, up to my eyes. Uh, and it get, it'll get bigger. And it'll grow all summer. And, uh, Okra is just something down here in the south we really love. Grow okra um, in our garden yeah, because it's it's really expensive in the store. It's high, uh, the price is high on okra, and it's hard to find good okra in the store. Uh, this is one of those things you pretty much have got to grow yourself, and it's a money saver. Is it's really itchy. So when I grew these three rows, I tried to get them pretty close together so that I could reach and I'm, I'm kind of lucky because this row is shorter than that row so I can reach over this row and cut these but okra is itchy uh, a lot of people you know if they're really cutting a bunch of okra they'll wear long sleeves and gloves and all that kind of stuff because if your skin sensitive uh, it will aggravate your skin but once you get a nice big plate of some fried okra it won't bother you to get your skin aggravated a little bit. It's really good.